Good morning, Montrose United Methodist Church and the wider community joining us for worship. I'm Pastor Lisa, the pastor here at the Montrose United Methodist Church, and I want to welcome you to the first Sunday in Advent. We're doing things a little bit differently this morning, so we're going to give you just a couple minutes to look at some slides, check out some of the things we have upcoming, center yourself for worship, and listen to some beautiful music that we have played by Lori Ranham, our very own accompanist here. Friends, take just a minute, and I'll be back with you as we begin this first Sunday in Advent. Welcome to worship. Once again, welcome to worship. I'm glad that you're here on this first Sunday of Advent. You'll notice that we have our Advent candles. Now, some of you might not be quite familiar with Advent, but it is the beginning of the calendar year for us who are following a liturgical season. And that's just a fancy word for those who follow a church year. So January is usually the beginning of the year, but for us, we start in December, this time of waiting. And since December is just a few days away here, this is the beginning, the four weeks before Christmas. So each week, we will light a candle, and then on Christmas Eve, we will light the Christ candle here in the middle. So I've invited the Waxler family to start us out, and we're going to move this over, and they're going to go ahead and, uh, and light our first candle. So with that, friends, welcome to worship. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, a season of anticipation for what God is about to do for us. Advent reminds us that no matter how dark the times, we are not alone. God is with us and will deliver us. The theme of the, fir of the first Sunday is hope. So we light the first candle, the candle of hope. As this candle is lit, it reminds us that hope is alive. Hope moves us forward. Hope tells us the future will be bright. Hope makes life worth living. Without hope, we would die. So we are never lost because we will never lose hope. We know that God will send us a savior to rescue us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you. 
Good morning. The reading this morning is from Isaiah 64. And in this reading, we are seeing the transition from complaining to praying. So Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down and make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways, but when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become one like who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a relief, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and you have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. You are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Today I would like to read a book to you. It's titled A Very Thankful Prayer by Bonnie Rickner Jensen and illustrated by Natalia Moore. Every day I wake up with a happy, thankful heart. I fold my hands and say a prayer, the perfect way to start. I'm thankful for my woolly scarf, my cozy coat and hat. They make me feel all snuggled in, no matter where I'm at. I'm thankful for the colored leaves of yellow, orange, and red floating through the chilly air and landing on my head. I'm thankful for the farmer's fields where good things start from seed. The sunbeams and the raindrops help to grow the food we need. I'm thankful for my family and their great big bear hug love. All good things are gifts from God. They are blessings from above. I'm thankful for the pumpkin patches filled with big round fun. I love to march down every row to find my favorite one. I'm thankful for the friends I have. They like to laugh and play. Together we have special times that brighten up my day. I'm thankful for the juicy apples ready to be picked. They're yummy in a pie or dipped on a candy stick. I'm thankful for Thanksgiving and the family time we share. When we hold hands and bow our heads, God's love is always there. I'm thankful for a cozy fire, giving warmth and light. 
beneath the shining moon that glows among the stars at night. I'm thankful I can help someone when I share and give. Showing others kindness is the nicest way to live. I'm thankful for the seasons, and I'm thankful God made fall. But for his love that fills the earth, I'm thankful most of all. O oh God of all creation, the dark and the light, the smallest of atoms and the greatest galaxies. We are humbled that you love us and hear our prayers. We live in troubling times. A deadly virus is ravaging our communities. A bitter di division is raveling our relationships. We need your healing hand in all our land. We are weary of this present darkness. The news of every day brings us more heartbreak. The words of our pe of people we love wrench our souls. We need your profound love to fill our people. We confess that we are unsure of our future. How long, O oh Lord, will these times continue? Send us your light that we might see your path for us. Send us a promised hope that we might move forward. Fill us with your spirit, O oh Lord, that we will act like Jesus. Fill us with hope, a sure and ready and steady hope that our love like Jesus will change the world. Amen. Hello, my name is Becky Pendergrass, and I'm the chairperson for the Missions Committee here at the Montrose United Methodist Church. I want to speak with you about Advent. Advent is the season of hope and expectation. The first day of Advent is the first day of the church calendar, and it begins a four-week period of preparation in anticipation of the birth of Jesus. Advent season is all about reflecting on how we can prepare our hearts and homes for Christ's birth in the world as it is today. It is a time for faith communities and families to remember through prayer, reflections, special music, and good deeds what the true meaning of Jesus' birth is. This Advent season here in the Montrose United Methodist Church, you will have the opportunity to provide a good deed to our community with your offerings. The two opportunities are Encore. Encore stands for the United Methodist Committee on Relief in the Global Humanitarian and Development Organization of the United Methodist Church. 100% of the donations are directed to an earmarked project, our relief effort. Encore is categorized into three major areas, humanitarian relief and disaster response, sustainable development, and global health. Our number two Advent offering will go to the support of the Sharing Ministries Food Bank. It is a non-profit food bank serving Montrose and surrounding counties. Their vision is to ensure that all people in the southwestern part of Colorado will have access to nourishing food that is provided in a manner that promotes com compassion, self-sufficiency, self-respect, and the dignity of the individuals. While this year, our Advent season looks much different for all of us with no indoor Christmas services. We still invite you to watch our online services and to make your donation to these two projects. If writing a check, please write Advent in the description. May you be blessed during this special season of Advent.
So in the New Testament reading of Mark chapter 13, the Jews are rebelling against the Romans. And Jesus and his disciples are on the Mount of Olives. And Jesus' pro prophecy of the fall of Jerusalem and a warning to prepare for his second coming are what the text is about. So we start in Mark chapter 13, verse 24 through 37, and it reads, But in these days, following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven know the Son, but only the Father. So be on guard, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house, he puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of God for all to hear. Mm. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Friends, my husband uh, did this thing. Now, even by mentioning his uh, person, I will owe him some money. That's how things work in our house. But my husband, this last year, took a romaine lettuce butt. Can I say that on TV, on the internet, wherever you're watching? You know the end of a lettuce? So you have a whole head of lettuce of beautiful, long romaine leaves, and you chop off the very bottom of that. I'm not sure what the technical term is called, so I apologize. But he took that after we had used all the lettuce, and uh, normally we throw those things away. They go in the compost. They go uh, anywhere except for where he put it. And uh, I found that one day he had taken it and he had put it into the dirt. Now, just like you would stand up the, he put the end of it into the dirt, he put some dirt around it and uh, expected leaves to grow. And I just kind of laughed a little bit. I thought, well, it's dead, sweetheart. We already got all of the lettuce leaves from it. We ate all of it. It was delicious. And now can't you just throw it away? Little did I know, he knew exactly what he was doing. And uh, that's often how that works in my household. He watered it each day or every couple days, made sure it sat in the windowsill in which I just laughed at it for the first two weeks. And then one day, I woke up in the morning and came to the kitchen and flipped on the light. I was going to make coffee, and sure enough, it was this little teeny sprout of a leaf. And over the next couple days, more and more little sprouts, and soon we had these small leaves that were growing. Something that I thought was dead and gone, buried, finito, actually ended up having more life in it. It was the beginning of a new head of lettuce. Didn't even know that was possible. Friends, sometimes we think the end of the world is here. The end of something. It is the, the finale, the final. And what we forget is that God is always in the works. God is making things new. 
when we read our text from Isaiah 64, and then when we also see Jesus talking his, to his disciples in Mark, we see that there is this ending language. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down and make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. If that's not scary, I'm not quite sure what is. You come to help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. For all of us have become unclean. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you. You have hidden your face from us, but come, Lord, you, Lord, you, Lord, our father, and we are clay. You are the potter. We forget God is always at work. Things that seem tumultuous and crazy and hard, well, they are, but God is at work. God is not done yet. In the prophets, we continually see people speaking for God and telling of God's continuing line, not only of people, but of the earth and things to come. And so then we get to our text from Matthew, excuse me, from Mark. And in Mark, in Mark, Jesus is talking to his disciples and he is talking about the time that will come. At that time, you will see the Son of Man talking about himself coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. But from that day or hour, nobody knows. Nobody knows. So keep watch. Do you hear the echo of even just a couple of weeks ago when we did look at Matthew and there were a couple of people not knowing when their master was going to come back and they had been given these coins and they were supposed to produce. And here we have similar. When he talks about a man, he says, therefore keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back. Whether it is the evening or midnight, you don't know. So keep watch of what you have been asked to keep watch of. I'm not sure about you, but I think the disciples, when they heard these words from Jesus, might have been a little bit confused. Because they're slightly confusing. So you want us to keep watch, Lord? What do we keep watching for? We're watching for the end? Jesus. We're watching for the end? I don't know what the end looks like. But our text says the sun will darken, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. That's something I haven't seen yet. I know right now a lot of people are talking about this is the end times because there are so many fires and there's all these earthquakes and there's this global pandemic and so this must be the end times. But friends, the sun continues to come up every day. It is not darkened. The moon has its cycles, but it still is giving its light. Besides some shooting stars and some meteors, the stars have not all fallen from the sky. So friends, this is not the end of times, but it might be the end of something for you. And it might be the beginning of something for you. Because even when we think everything is lost and at its end, there is a beginning. Even in graduations, there is the finishing of something, but it is not the end. There is a beginning of something else. There is after graduation, for whatever that is. Even in death, that is not the end. It is simply the end of something and the beginning of something else, the end of life that we happen to be in these physical bodies, and the beginning of life everlasting, a time with Jesus. So friends, even though these texts seem a little bit scary and confusing, even though Advent seems to be the end of the year for us, it really is the beginning. We are spending our time waiting with anticipation the beginning, the birth of Jesus Christ. 
Friends, you have some homework. Where in your life have you thought this has got to be the end? I don't see the next step. I don't see the next thing. I just don't know. Friends, whatever looks like an ending, I promise you, it may be the ending for that, but it is just the beginning of something else, something beautiful, something maybe even miraculous, for God is making all things new. Even though this time seems hard, friends, I hope that whatever feels like an end, you might search a little deeper, dig a little deeper, and ask yourself, what might God be beginning? What is Christ starting anew in me? Friends, we gather each week to celebrate our time of waiting, our anticipation. And each week we'll light some more candles and each week we will get closer to Christmas. I assure you Christmas will look very different, but it is not bad and it is not wrong. It is simply something new. And I believe that God is doing something new. It is not the end of the world. It is just the beginning. Amen. We believe in God who created each of us, who blessed us with gifts and talents in abundance. We believe in Jesus Christ who came into the world bringing light in our darkness, 
who forgives all our past imperfections so we can rise with renewed energy to fulfill our creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is available as a guide through each new day, who reminds us that God is with us. There is always hope. We are the people of God. We are the First United Methodist Church of Montrose, inviting all people to come into the presence of God, welcoming all people into the Church of Jesus Christ going forth with a mission to change the world. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us for worship this morning for this beautiful first Sunday in Advent. I hope that you'll join us each Sunday as we light a new candle and as we look at the themes for each week. I want to invite you to check out some of the slides that we have at the end of service and let you know about the Advent devotion that we have. We have two options this year, and one of them is uh, with Sarah, and that is Wednesday nights. You can, anybody, anybody, let me stress this, anybody in the community, if you're local, uh, reserve your spot, call Sarah or let us know in the church office um, by Tuesday because Wednesdays, each week in Advent, we're going to buy a pizza for you or some sort of dinner, uh, probably mostly pizza, so just pizza Wednesdays, and then also an Advent devotion that you can drive up to the church and we will come to your car window and hand it to you so you can go home. This is for anybody to do, so we hope that you'll join us in that. Also, we have some PDFs and some other devotionals we put together if you don't want Want to leave your homes and you just want to access your computer, you can download a PDF, you can click on a couple links as my siblings and uh, family have put together another option for your devotionals for the month of or the time of Advent. Friends, remember that in each ending there is a beginning. Remember that you, you friends, in whatever beginning or ending you find yourself in, it is through the grace of God. Friends, go and change the world. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Christmas pageant is going to be... Is this thing working? Am I on mute? I know people listening to me! Thank you. This year's Christmas, Christmas pageant is going to be... Do not be afraid. This year, our pageant will not be in person. Instead, we will be doing a virtual video premiere. Check your December newsletter and weekly emails for more information. Characters this year's pageant will include are Angels, Mary and Elizabeth, Caesar and King Herod, Shepherds, Shepherds and Astronomer Magi. Nolan, what does a cow say? Lou. Yay, Nolan.